Hi, my name is Rachel Fan. I'm a speech language pathologist and part of the infant development team here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. I'm also a certified lactation counselor and I specialize in working with mothers and babies who are having difficulties with breastfeeding as well as infant oral motor and feeding development. And today I'm going to talk to you about pacifiers. So in this video, we're going to look at some reasons why you may want to use a pacifier or not, how to choose a pacifier for your infant if you decide to use one, and then when and how to wean off of the pacifier when it's time. Many new or expecting moms have gotten the advice that pacifiers should not be introduced until breastfeeding is well established. Um, with the idea being that, you know, pacifier might interfere with the breastfeeding relationship or make it harder for a baby to learn to breastfeed, could potentially cause nipple confusion, some of those things. Now, where did this rumor start? Well, some older observational studies indicated that infants who use pacifiers also had a harder time breastfeeding. Now, these studies didn't did not necessarily indicate causation, right? We didn't prove that the pacifier was causing the breastfeeding difficulty. We established correlation, right? Babies who use pacifiers also had a harder time breastfeeding, but it could have been the other way around. The babies who had a harder time breastfeeding, the moms may have been more likely to offer a pacifier. These studies really didn't prove either way if there was a cause or effect, and if so, which was the cause and which was the effect. Newer meta-analyses and randomized control trials, which are much more robust types of research, have indicated that at three to four months of age, there really is no difference in breastfeeding rates or breastfeeding outcomes between infants who were given a pacifier early on and infants who were not. In fact, in 2018, the World Health Organization changed the wording of the one of the steps in their 10 steps to um, successful breastfeeding. And they went from not recommending pacifiers um, or artificial nipples prior to breastfeeding being well established to now suggesting that we counsel mothers on the pros and cons of introducing a pacifier or a bottle early on versus waiting until breastfeeding has been well established. So really we need to look at why and how we're using a pacifier and think of it as another tool in our parenting toolbox rather than something that should be villainized as harmful. And in fact, there are some really good reasons to use a pacifier. One, if families are choosing not to breastfeed or um, have had, had to stop breastfeeding for whatever reason, babies need to suck. Um, it's very important for their development that non-nutritive sucking as well as the nutritive sucking. It's um, important for pain relief, for comfort, for um, nervous system regulation. So if we're not breastfeeding or we don't want to be baby's pacifier all the time, you know, pacifier does serve a really important role. Another good reason to use a pacifier is that numerous studies have indicated a reduction in the rate of SIDS um, for babies that are put to sleep with a pacifier. So even if we decide that we don't want to, want to depend on a pacifier during the day, putting baby to sleep with a pacifier can be really, really beneficial. And while SIDS is rare, you know, when it happens, it's very, very devastating to the family. There are a couple of different studies that have looked at why and how the pacifier reduces the rate of SIDS. Um, it's not still, still not very well understood. However, a couple of theories that have a little bit of evidence supporting them are one, when the pacifier is in the mouth, the baby's jaw kind of moves forward a little bit and opens up the airway. Um, and another way that the pacifier can help is that when infants are born, they're autonomic nervous system or the part of the brain that controls things like breathing, heart rate, temperature regulation, all of those automatic bodily functions is not very well, not very well developed. And so those little sucking bursts on the pacifier um, as baby is going through the stages of sleep can help to um, 
that part of the nervous system to regulate itself and make sure that all of those bodily functions, functions are happening as they should. Another reason that people sometimes are a little bit nervous about using a pacifier is because of the potential for um, causing changes to the shape of the mouth, um, the teeth, and causing, you know, problems there. Um, however, again, when we're talking about little bitty babies, all of their facial structures are growing so quickly that intermittent pacifier use is not going to cause problems. It's when we're still using the pacifier as a toddler um, and that face shape or that facial growth has slowed down a little bit and we're using a pacifier a lot of the time still because toddlers are very stubborn and they get very attached that you know we see more problems. So we'll talk about late, a little bit later how to wean off of a pacifier so that we don't have that impact. But let's talk a little bit now about what to look for when we are choosing a pacifier for our infant. Um, I have a few examples here. These are some pretty commonly used pacifiers that, um, that in common pacifier shapes that we see in the store. Um, so first up is going to be this Soothe pacifier. Um, this is typically the one that hospitals will send home, something like this. Um, this is a really good pacifier shape. This long um, rounded nipple here allows baby's tongue to cup gently around it um, and establish a really good normal sucking pattern. Um, similarly to how baby would suck at the breast or on a bottle nipple. Um, so I like, I like something shaped like this. Now, some people will get this and they'll be like, oh, my baby can't keep that in their mouth. And so they'll go to something more like one of these with a flatter nipple here, um, or one that's, that's, you know, still pretty flat, um, with kind of a bulbous shape at the end but generally flat. And they feel like that stays in baby's mouth a little bit better. What this tells me is that baby is not able to suck properly. So this flat shape is easier to stay in their mouth because baby can use it with kind of a mashing pattern. So if this is the roof of the mouth, the tongue is just mashing up against it. Um, could be an indicator of some oral restriction or um, some oral motor skill de um, delays that, you know, we really want to look into if baby can't get that nice um, cupping of the tongue um, around the nipple, right? And we're getting this nice pulling wave-like pattern. Um, that's the, the sucking pattern that baby should be using. Um, and so if we can't use something like this, and we're resorting to this because we feel like it's the only thing that works. And you know, we maybe want to look a little bit more into what's going on with baby's oral motor development. And are we truly sucking or are we mashing and using our jaws um, more than our tongue, right? And getting that imbalance in the way that we're using our mouth, um, not developing good tongue strength and tongue mobility. Um, so the only caveat to this one is I've seen, you've seen the, um, the pacifiers that look like this, but then they have the stuffy hanging off of the end of them. And those are especially damaging because that stuffy places a lot of downward pressure on the, um, on the jaws. And research has shown that that stuffy, as light as it seems, when it's hanging off of the pacifier in the infant or toddler's mouth, it's putting enough pressure there to cause orthodontic change, right? So it, it weighs enough that it is changing the shape of baby's jaws, the way that baby's jaw is growing um, and can cause lots of problems down the line, um, looking at, you know, needing orthodontia, um, airway problems, feeding problems, just because our now our jaw is out of alignment um, and has grown downward rather than forward. So let's talk a little bit more now about how to get rid of the pacifier, right? There comes a time 
when we need to get rid of the pacifier. I personally recommend around six months of age starting to wean off of the pacifier. Why six months? This is an age where babies are starting to be more interested in putting things in their mouth. So it's pretty easy to give them other types of oral, to oral toys, um, things like chew toys, teethers, things like that, that let them explore different parts of their mouth a little bit more. Let them practice biting and chewing skills because it's a really important age for that. Let them practice moving their tongue around towards the sides to reach towards those um, chewing toys. And they're young enough that they're not super attached to the pacifier yet. Um, if we get rid of it during the day, like that's at six months, that's probably enough if you still feel like you need to give your baby a pacifier at night to sleep. Um, the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry recommends getting rid of a pacifier entirely by the age of 18 months to prevent any issues with um, dental um, orthodontic problems or like dental development. So really like starting that weaning process at six months, working on moving towards more age appropriate types of oral play um, is a really good you know, starting point, working on that goal of being completely done with the pacifier by 18 months of age. We also find that around six months of age, babies a little bit more mature and the risk of SIDS has dropped pretty drastically. So, you know, it's, it's just a really good time to just start working towards getting rid of that pacifier. Um, if you have any further questions or you're finding that some of this information made you think about, you know, maybe your baby needs a little bit of help with oral motor skill development or feeding development, or you have more questions, please reach out to one of the therapists here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. We'd be happy to answer your questions. Thanks so much.